Hello everybody, welcome to the IGK Soccer Show. It's the 3rd of November 2016. This episode is entitled Poppies and Toffees. How are things, John? Had better days. <laughs> Can you talk for a little bit longer? And no, something I, with I, an S and an R I in it? I think he's a bit no, better now. I have like a toffee like on the side of my mouth. Just clear enough that I can talk. But not Self-inflicted, clear. to be fair. <laughs> nah, I definitely got in here and just shoved toffee in my face. <laughs> he's a bit, one there, he's have a it. bit toffeed out. So guys, how are things? How, how, how are you good. doing? Yeah, you good? Yeah. Okay, fantastic. We'll start off with some uh, news. We were watching the... You can tell we're mates there. How's it? Grand. Yeah. Get through this. And I also am pretty sure nobody listening really cares. So, no. <laughs> thought I'd move on. A- after the YouTube video that got put up on the ITK Soccer Show. You were so upset about that. Maybe we should talk about that first. I yeah. wasn't upset about it. You were definitely irked. Very, very upset. Uh, just every once in a while, videos go up on that particular channel. That have nothing Don't look at me. You're literally looking at me Don't while you're saying this. Don't look at me. Who put it up? Whose channel is it? The ITK, it's everyone's. I didn't even want to do it, let alone have it recorded. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone couldn't remember their lines. Yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, I didn't. Even, neither of us. I didn't even want to do it, and uh, they recorded it, and I'm pretty sure I blew it away. I, I thought you were. I thought you were fantastic, uh, Dan. I, I really. I'm, I'm what do you think of me? I'm not going to say I watched it. I got my one line right. It's one of those few moments in life where I honestly had no idea what to say. So I think I shared it with everyone in my phone book. <laughs> just, just like, what? What's this? <laughs> But you know the idea was that it trendy. might get some hits, you know, and then people start watching, like, subscribe to the show. Yeah, he's. It's true. Gonna be very That's what I was trying to do, but you know, obviously, dual, not. dual promotion. We yeah. never, we never talk about Pokemon on this show, and we probably won't. <laughs> Moving on, <laughs> and nothing ever happened. Uh, we watched <laughs> Liverpool versus Spurs last week in the uh, EPL, and uh, no, not the EPL. The extra E to the make people think they have a sponsor. There you go. The extra E to make people think they have a sponsor. So the draw of dreams happened. Unfortunately, we won't be able to travel over to the match in Anfield when Liverpool take on Leeds. Was it the 23rd of November? 28th or 9th. 28th. It's okay. Tuesday. We'll probably, yeah. we'll probably be recording that day. And it'll be the worst. I know. We'll go to, we'll go, we'll go to the we'll go to the Delaney's and we'll have a few. I'm going to call today because it's the Leeds pub. We need a home advantage. The thing is, though, I don't know if I'll enjoy going to Delaney's because I won't feel like I'll be able to properly celebrate if we were to do well. That's not like going to a Leeds pub Leeds ground. If we had a two or three goal head start, you would still win. I don't know about that. I really... If we were had you at home, I think we would have had a chance. Any other draws in the Coca-Cola Cup uh, that uh, entice you in this round? Uh, Southampton have Arsenal and they've a re- Arsenal are a bad record against them. Uh, up, up, until the, up until the last match. And... Uh, Man United got West Ham, wasn't it? Or something. Yeah, it's, it's great though that like I was worried that Leeds would draw like a mid-table Premier League team, but we got the team top of the league. I was delighted. I was, I was worried a team in red were going to come, and then uh, we got Liverpool instead. I, I think um, in most people's hearts, we're still a mid-table Premier League team. Well, well, it's, it's, well, it's, well the league table doesn't lie. Well, like I, I, I just, I just bought tickets there to like Liverpool's like second last home game. And you're predicting? So I'm predicting. So it's on, a is this the finish. second last game of the season or their second last home game? Second last home game. So oh. second third last game of the season. So like it's there a, is a, it's a chance the seventh place finish. So that means <laughs> there's guaranteed there's seventh at least place finish. three probably there's at least two games before. It's not usual the r- the league is wrapped up two games before. Yeah, on av- on average I'd say two. It's yeah. usually two for sure. Yeah, but it depends on how many teams are in it going for it. Like yeah. Arsenal will fade away. I sure it'll be game a two halves. A lovely day. Out so out. sorry predictions in that match. I think <laughs> Liverpool leads. Like I honestly, I think it'll probably be four now. Leads. I'm going to say 4-2. You think we'll score two? Well, we, yeah. You think we're going to score? I think it'll be similar to like when we played Havant in Waterlooville. Like I think a, a Boubacar or whatever it was scored. Oh, like Jesus Christ. Dude, Dakar. Yeah, whoever. What his name is it? Boubacar yeah. plays rubbish. Exactly. No, he's <laughs> thinking about um, uh, 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 the giant man. No, that was Watford, wasn't it? Or that was um, Wimbledon. Yeah. I can, I can, oh, I can, I can Fenway. I, I think I mixed up like eight. I think his name was like Fenway. Well, I think he can still score a few goals. I think Liverpool will come out with a bit of a stroll and concede a few goals, making the match seem... Well, see, Liverpool don't keep clean sheets, I think you'll probably play your best team, will you, though? No, I wouldn't. No? Depends. If if he lines up for me, you know, Coutinho and uh, uh, dear lad, Mane, I'd be pretty annoyed, like... Well, you'd be annoyed if you saw Sturridge, considering what he did to Spurs, too. Um... Yeah, look, I'd be pretty annoyed at everyone. I, I, the worst that, news that, ever that happened was Danny Ings getting injured because he might have got a game. Dan, like, Dan's pretty sure that the Leeds defence can handle, handle Daniel Sturridge. Yeah, we'll well, see. We, we barely kept a clean sheet against Burton Albion at home. We've got a smaller stadium than uh, St. Pat's. Wow, do they? Didn't know that? Yeah. Let's move on to Danny Ings. So what happened was, for those of you who don't know, and it's obviously not being reported officially by the club because it's quite embarrassing, 
Um, they brought in basically Liverpool are doing a kind of a world tour at the moment where there's lots of ambassadors and celebrity guests and it's to promote Liverpool as a club in places like Asia and Australia and stuff like that no matches are being played but just kind of fan fests if you will Ian Rush is the master of ceremonies and one of the attractions at these Liverpool conventions is Robo Keeper and Robo Keeper is a robotic keeper that is the fastest goalkeeper in the world. There's sensors all around the goalpost, and basically it's near impossible. It's a small There's a goal. Video of Messi as in, trying to do it, and Messi can. Fastest, Messi. as in most agile, or fastest off his line in a straight. No, it's just like a thing agile. that moves okay. like that, right? right. It's, Messi couldn't do it. Ian Rush couldn't do it. But before this was when it's on tour now. But last week, okay, uh, on Sunday, the day after the game, they had Lucas Milner, Ings, and Moreno have a go at it. The only person to score was Danny Ings. He injured himself playing against Robo Keeper. This is true. Yes, it is. Because Klopp said it was like defending. Like, was he no. defending against Robo? That's because the, no, he said it was defending. He was said it was defending in the Spurs match. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the video was taken post Spurs match. But are you sure it wasn't? Are you sure it wasn't pre-recorded? I'm saying it was recorded after the Spurs mm, match. Might have been no. Um, that's um, okay. he, well, Robo Keeper. So so hold on. Now. So he, he's out for a season. He's out for the rest of the season. Because he had a shot with a football. Well, he needs and he's a professional need, footballer. He needs surgery on his knee. First of all, you need to respect so Robo Keeper. So he did his knee in. But was it a one-on-one one or just a shot? Okay, Robo Keeper doesn't move, except from side to side. So <laughs> he stands there and he shoots at Robo Keeper. I like, know. is it a penalty or a free kick? Listen, the, I'm not going to complain Dan's about like imagining it. the robots from, like, yeah. itchy and scratchy land. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Same thing. <laughs> <laughs> I know but that there's been critiques about certain... Like, you've seen this video. Uh, Messi takes a shot and the, su- the sensors and he saves it. It's, oh, yeah. It's yeah. Simple. Yeah. Nobody was able to do it except Danny Ings. And he sacrificed his body for another season out injured. Thanks, to Robocop. That's probably the end. Of, is his contract up the end of the season? Probably. Okay. He wouldn't be more than two here's, years. Here's the little weird thing about it. Klopp and Liverpool have releasing videos every day since it happened. Starting with Klopp. Then... Uh, uh, then fucking Lalana because they're really good mates and then Chan and Joe Gomez and continue I, oh I didn't know about those right I mean, so that's two a day about people talking about how the club is going to support him so it, even though it looks on paper like his Liverpool career is over th- it seems the club are making an effort to kind of they probably feel bad to be honest <laughs> like. <laughs> because they put him against I, whoever brought Robo Keeper you know what it's good that Robo Keeper is in Singapore at the moment because Klopp would have probably, physically it's fought probably him. still better than our two keepers have at the moment <laughs> This man here doesn't respect RoboKeeper. The no. research you could have done on this show, all you do is watch one RoboKeeper video. Of course he's better than our two keepers because he's the fastest goalkeeper in the world. Put him in goal. Yeah. <laughs> is Dan, Danny Ings Dan's Liverpool, afraid of the future. Is, is, <laughs> aren't we all? Is Liverpool's... Um, well, the Cubs won. Is Liverpool's... Uh, or is Danny Ings' Liverpool career over? Yes or no? Yeah, I'd say I'd say he'll be in the championship next year. I'm going to stay. No. There's too many players around there that like him. It's weird. No, but he'd be loaned out and he'll probably get a move then to a, a promoter championship team. It's just so weird the way, the outpouring of the for Leeds next year. Dan. Him and Dakar up front and Ubu Bakar. Bakar. Uh, the Irish squad announcement. Actually, we'll leave that till the end. Um, we? Yeah, because we will just keep with England for a moment. Kasper Smigel has broken his hand. He's out for about two months. Yeah, that's bad news. He kept them in their, ma- their Champions League match yesterday. Uh, he certainly did. He's, yeah. they, let's just love him because he's a goal in terms of, and he's been man of the match in like three of their matches yeah we'll talk about, we can talk about that now if you want. season as well he, he, he missed the start do you not know? Zealer yeah. is in yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah it's a big loss for them because mm-hmm. like they're not very good anyway <laughs> and he's probably been their best player this year actually yeah he definitely has Inter Milan, Inter Milan sack uh, De Boyer who you didn't know was actually the no and just as well ago. Well, I knew it's so breaking the fourth wall no, this was on the show. I said oh, that. Yeah, it was, yeah. But uh, uh, apparently uh, John's friend, Gwydlin. You were, see, you were actually seeing into the future. Gwydlin, huh? Yeah. Big mate. What the fuck? What's his connection with Gwydlin? I thought it was good. He liked him a lot. Very sad. It's not like. the Ajax manager who's, uh, who's supposedly going for it. The Ajax manager? Fuck to find. Just a thing. Gwydlin. <laughs> the, there's oh, just a thing on the show, funny. like, if you've been listening, we all, all have to overrate, uh, yeah former Swansea manager so he is Gary Monk and yeah I but he, I overrated and, him well before he joined you're Leeds. a Bob Bradley <laughs> Bad Bradley he's not a former manager yes. speaking <laughs> of Swansea and one of the um, greatest clickbait photos going around all the shite sports websites today the headline was Man United hero set to return to the Premier League a picture of Cristiano Ronaldo and behind him in the distance putting his arm on his shoulder after scoring a goal 
Dimitar Berbatov. Yeah. Swansea, Love suppose you have interest in him. He was on a pundit show recently saying he wanted to come back for the Premier League. Last, he was seen uh, being relegated with Fulham. Would you bring 35-year-old Well, last Berbatov? he was seen was scoring, uh, running a halfway line against Arsenal scoring. Uh, that is actually true. Um... If he, take if, he, if he decides to run, yeah, but like they're very slow up front. He's 35. Lorente and Berbatov. Yeah, but Lorente and Berbatov up front is imagine. like so slow. I mean, like. That's a Sam Allardyce dream team, though. It's pretty bad. Just get poor like Andy Carroll in beside them. Uh, if, if, yes. if, if he was fit. Are if we he saying was that till the end? Ah, I'll happy anytime. I think this is probably the biggest news of the week that a. Well, it was kind of more of a. One of the, one of the stories you hate at the end, isn't it? No, I think it's pretty big news he's, that a, a man... A spoofer uh, or a hero. No, men on motorcycles chasing Andy Carroll with guns is pretty intense. Where did, where did they pick him? He saw something he shouldn't have seen. They were they just committed a robbery. And supposedly Andy Carroll was driving this big, lovely car and looking at them. And they were like... And they recognized Andy Carroll. But they got him to come over. He, 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 went, he pulled over at them. I don't know. He did. did he, he pulled over. And then they realized he had guns, like, oh shit, and he tried to drive away, So and they, he, they drove after him. Yeah, and he drove back to the grounds yeah. to report it to security and hide for a little bit. Yeah, it's like, let me in, there's a guy with a gun. First time he's seen the club in weeks, I'd say. <laughs> hey, lads, do you remember me? Poor Andy. To fair, he keeps getting out. remember he got into the fight outside Coppers, and he got in a fight with a guy in a rickshaw? He got in a fight outside Coppers here, yeah? We've, yeah. All, we've, all got, we've all got in a fight with a guy in a rickshaw, though. I know it's like Coppers. Huh? Not in a rickshaw, it's like Coppers, yeah. That's ah, a bit of everything. When did this happen with Andy Carroll? Uh, a couple of years ago. Did you see Kevin Kilban uh, mentioning coppers on Match of the Day? He did. He did? Didn't care for that. <laughs> that. That place doesn't need any more advertising. Jesus, John. Fair enough. That toffee's um, gone to his head. Yeah. <laughs> Too much sugar. I've gotten angry now. Okay, so um, the poppy controversy in England versus Scotland. Uh, what, and, like, what this, do you want to talk about? This fuck off, like, doesn't it? This is, uh, it's so th- stupid. This is just clickbaity thing. Like, the thing now is that... It, but the MPs it, are going mad about it. It's a new thing. But yeah, like it's but it's all this Brexit thing. It's a backload of that, and it's like all this shite. Oh, Britannia ruled the world. All this fucking crap. That That's they not have. what it's like, about. But ah, you know what I mean, though. It's it's all it's that sort of like all media Muslims coverage. are the same. It's the same <laughs> media coverage. Um, I think that can more you play and more like God save the Queen. Yeah, I can. <laughs> I think more people are just kind of conscious of the fact that now that one person in the Premier League spoke out about it last season, I think other people are feeling like they can. And we had a chat about it last week, and you know, you changed my mind about it. So I think it's a very, val- you know, I think it's a very valid topic. I don't know. Obviously, people do see the opportunity for clickbait with it, and they'll blow stuff out of proportion. It's sewn into the jerseys for the first week, and then it's recommended to be put on. Why can't they just put on a black armband? No, that's what they're going to do. They're going to do it anyway. And apparently, Scotland are up for it as well, which I very much doubt they actually really want to do. But that's the whole thing about it is the issue. If people want to wear the poppy. They should just wear it. Well, you know the way it's on the armband? Is that so you can choose to wear it or not? Or is this No, like they're going to be given armbands. But the whole thing is, people who don't want to wear it, like James McLean, he shouldn't have to wear it. after. Like It'd be like giving a Palestinian guy an Israeli... Is, does anything happen if they don't wear it? No. Well, then... People no, are just but what they're doing it. is... It, I'm talking about the week, this, this last two weeks, that they'll, they'll be wearing it for, Yeah, is that they're forced to wear it. So these people died, apparently, in war... Uh, you know, whatever, even though half the people murdered half the world throughout the fucking last couple of hundred years. Do you honestly think they're forced? Do you think they just they show are, up? John. Do you think they just show up on match day and it's sewn into their kit and most of them are like, Meh. Well, if, if someone sewed it onto that me, is, I'd, I'd, I wouldn't want it on me. Well, that yeah, is, but, but what John is saying if, is if the reality arrived, of it. I'd go, I go, in, I'd go, go into the club shop and go, can I have a jersey? What if it's an away game? Yeah. No, but I just think there's a lot to it. Like, these people apparently... Oh, died for freedom, and then yet people who don't want to wear it get vilified and are just forced on them. Yeah. There should be an option because that's not freedom. It's ridiculous. I don't. Uh, yeah, look, I think it's one of those things. The more people that refuse to wear it, I, I think people will stop vilifying them. At least a little bit. Like I, I actually stop. Fair play, James. I know, John, you don't agree with him, but I think uh, he shouldn't have to wear something that he's <laughs> he's put up with a lot of crap in his life, and he shouldn't sure. have to do. It. Yeah. So okay, I th- the whole thing just needs to fuck Has up. Has he put up with a lot of crap in his life? Well, yeah, he's from Derry and all the troubles up there, yes. So I'm sure he has. His family probably is. A lot of connections. But uh, the thing is they're giving out a bit now that the MPs are bringing up that uh, Ireland wore a commemorative... There was a flag they have from 1916, but they said it's the 100 years of the state rather than anything that... And they're actually saying, oh, Ireland were able to do it against Switzerland uh, in a friendly in March. Yeah. But also, that's just commemorating 100 years of being a state. Sure. That's not oh, actually commemorating anyone who died. The or 1916 thing was 
the time we took over a biscuit factory. It's well, I, it is. Yeah. I'm wondering if uh, if like an English was, player playing for Ireland, if they refuse to wear it, the would they get thing, heat? Like, there's a lot of uh, photos going around of years ago. The poppy thing wasn't a new thing. Like, it's a new thing relatively that every player wears it. And similar to the 1916 thing, it's just a big advertising whatever to remember. But uh, my, my view on it is, if people don't want to wear it, it shouldn't be forced on them. And FIFA are right, or UEFA are right to say no because it is a completely political thing, and they can promote it. They shouldn't promote anything at all that doesn't involve football. Yeah, just fuck off. Don't I, do I it. I would. I would always keep and it separate. It's sure. just this whole outrage and everything about it. People like it's just it's really bugging me to be honest about it. When it and like you know, it's going to last for a few more weeks anyway. Yeah. Um, moving on to international news, uh, the Ireland squad was announced for the Austria game, which will be attending. Down. Was there any interesting omissions or additions? Uh, well, we've no strikers. <laughs> We've nothing up front. Yes, Shane Long. No, we've Shane Long. Uh, we, we've got success. Yeah, we've got uh, yeah. probably Walters. will play up front by himself, but maybe Hull him behind our McGoldrick, Daryl Horgan's in the squad, and uh, Andy Boyle. When is this match? Uh, Saturday week, nine days. Looking forward to it. Yeah, yeah absolutely freezing cold and all. You talking to the mics? We heard. Please. Can't wait. Nah, <laughs> I'm eating another toffee. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't mind if you did. <laughs> Be able to hear something then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but no, so it's good to get some doc players in there. But uh, we, we've we really got a depleted squad. And John O'Shea went off injured as well. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, but John O'Shea is not Someone else bro. went off in. I think he might play. <laughs> <laughs> I think he went. And someone else went off injured as well. So And McCarthy, Kuman is like demanding he pulls out of the squad. Yes, yeah, so I was going to bring that up. Because he's not fit. Yeah. Something, but. So like I don't know I don't think he will. Well, he said that he, his his complaint his first complaint publicly was that the last time playing him in both games ruined him, and now he's advising don't play him this time around. Yeah, then and Martin O'Neill well, saying that's he's just a one tough of those boy. He's like McCarthy's always had this tug of war that yeah. with all managers. I remember Martin is at Wigan, and then when he went to um, Everton as well, he was having a go at him all the time not to play. So why? I don't know. Does he have hula hand stamina, or what's the problem with him? It's a bit of uh, if you remember what Torres was like with Liverpool. Like every time he went with Spain, he was injured straight away, and basically yeah. that happens with Everton McCarthy. Like every time he gets injured. Okay. Uh, final thing about international stuff is Martial's been dropped from the French team uh, in replace of Giroud, who only got his first bit of Premier League football in in eons this weekend. But Giroud's hardly replacing him. He's though, got three Martial's more of a kind of a you kind of play more on the left. Well, he, I know it's so, a, so they got Giroud and Dignac is, again. This it? is two plus two is four kind of stuff in the sense that Giroud. Who's back and Marshall's gone. What about the pub player? Benzema. Valbuena. It's in there. Guvu. Guvu. He's retired, isn't he? he must be. He was really yeah. fast like 2007. He was very fast. <laughs> they do. Uh, no, no uh, Valbuena at all, unfortunately. Or uh, what's, it, what's the other guy's name? Valbuena's a very small guy. Yes, Valbuena's a very five foot four. We, yeah. we did this a few weeks ago. Okay, moving on to... Um, United conceded after two minutes. Yeah, they're losing. They did. Oh, yeah. we should mention that we're recording early tonight, so the bulk of the Europa League Thursday ties haven't happened yet, but United and Federbache <laughs> is and happening. And Zenit are one up as well. <coughs> against the dog. Here. Um, Van Persie's not playing. He's not even in the squad. He's not really getting into their side, though. Martin Skirtle is playing. Listen to this lovely front three. Lentz, Sao, Sen. It's kind of like um, what's that thing in in what what do you call it when you're um, meditating and you have a phrase to say? What's that called again? Not your mantra. Your, you know, you, you you're given a phrase to repeat over and over again. A poem. Yes, yes, Dan. Maybe the Westernized version. <laughs> you Bruce. Know. Well, anyway, it's very nice front line. You want a promo? <laughs> yes, you could do it in many different orders. You could go sen lens sau. It's a good one, isn't it? See any other combinations here, John? You like? No. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Rooney's playing up front and Schneiderlin is getting uh, his second ever start under Mourinho. It's good to see Rashford out in the wing again. He's, he's done Poor so, Rashford. So like, I'd be worried now about him. Like, some of the things Brian Robson are like, burning out because like he's playing early every game now and it's yeah. after like no one had heard of him at this stage last year. Like I hadn't heard of him before he played his first year. Remember he scored in his Europa League debut? Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't even heard of him. Not <laughs> And something's going on. Sorry, go ahead. No one, no, one, no, one, no one had heard of him except until like a couple of months ago when, yeah. he, when he made yeah. his debut. And he's yeah. played nearly every game since. And he played a Euros as well. So he, it's, didn't, um, he didn't play a Euros. Well, he was, he was at the Euros. So oh. it's still more He played mileage. roughly 45 seconds against... It's not, it's not the three games. It's the mileage of training and everything and coming back late from the Euros. But he didn't. He just started every game again this year. So playing in Europa League and Carling Cup and stuff, they want to be careful what they're doing. 
Uh, Ebra's being brought on, but I can't see for I'll who. I'll check her. Um, also interesting that um, Mkhitaryan and um, Jones are in the squad. So that's not for Pogba, so unless Pogba got injured. Oh dear, could you imagine? Also, it's probably that just that well, that's for good for them. Pogba Sticking with some Man United news. Pogba is injured, yes. Oh Jesus. Schweinsteiger is back in uh, first team training. Rightfully so. He's good. He's a good player. He's just probably good a bit underweight. Over, underweight overweight. <laughs> he's, over, he's, he's, he's found the Manchester kebab shops and he's having a hell of a time. He does look there. a bit heavy. He looks Hel- a bit heavy. He's but he's probably, he's, would he contribute more than Pogba or Fellaini? Yes, he would. You've got a serious hatred for Pogba. And I he's think not been good. I don't know if he'll... He's been p- bought for 100 million, more. John, and they are really struggling. Like a man bought for 100 million should be doing more than he no, is doing. No, they're, they're not doing well, but Pogba is one of their more attacking midfielders. If you put Schweinsteiger in there beside Fellaini and Herrera, what on earth do you expect to happen? Do you think they're going to get more goals that way? I think I think Schweinsteiger would that? control the game a get lot more. Get rid of more. Ibra, play Rashford up yeah, by would, himself I would, or something. I would, I would the idea Ibra. of Schweinsteiger for Pogba is insane. They're struggling for goals as it is, and you're like... Yeah. I, I never said dropping for him. I just said I think you, you do more. Did. Than you did. You did. You did. You did. I said that. as a two, as a two in midfield, F- Fellaini and Pogba are not doing it. Oh, okay. they play three in midfield. Okay. And right. if you put Schweinsteiger in there, he'll have more control of the ball, more control of the play. You're not I think saying Schweinsteiger for Pogba. I don't think there's. I'd a say single Pogba because you've been on hundred million for him, and you can't drop him because yeah. you'd look like a fucking fool. I don't think there's a single match that United would play in the Premier League that Schweinsteiger would do a job in midfield against. He's it's very old. He's 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 just he's a broken old man. And if he wasn't a World Cup winner, people wouldn't remember be crying the, Remember like the goal he scored in the Euros where it took him a good seven and a half minutes to run to score? And then he was he couldn't even celebrate. <laughs> yeah, but the, the, the Ukraine. Like. Well, also in the, and, and he just come on as well. To be fair, in that semi-final against France, he bossed the game in midfield. And Pogba was playing against him, actually. He bossed that game in midfield. He really did very well in that so game. Let's didn't just, they lose, though? Ah, well, yeah. Germany should have been 3 nil up at half-time. But I'm just saying, I don't think he's as bad as people make him out to be. And I think tactically, and he just keep the ball well. And he, he's been treated badly. In of it. Like, there's no way he'd be any worse than what's going on in that midfield. That's all I'm going to say. There's no way in hell he'd be worse. I agree that he's been treated badly in the sense that I don't know why he wasn't allowed to train with the first team. Like, even if well, he's he, not going to be picked. I'd say he's on very high wages. I'd say he's on ridiculous wages. Like, uh, Rummenigge wants him back. But what's the, what does that have to do with, 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 with what I'm saying? Sorry? What does that have to do with what I just said? As in, if he's on very high wages, Marina might want him out, and maybe the board want him out. As in, like he's just on too much. Oh, money. Ju- okay, fair enough. And they might want to clear the budget or whatever it is, or you know. Grand. Frank, frankly, after he did that goodbye video to Bayern, sponsored by Beats, <laughs> I think I think I, I, I think he deserves a bit of time in the reserves. Get he needs to get his head straight. He needs to get his head Young straight. Young kid. Maybe he maybe he was sent to the reserves because he was a big lad, and then he lost a bit of weight, and now he's back in the team. Maybe that's exactly what it is. Who knows? Oh, well, but there's you know, a few of them, though. Like, I know Memphis has been a disaster, but there was a... Schne- Schneiderlin put down until last week. He pl- came on the Carnegie Cup. Schweinsteiger thrown down. Um, there's one or two others. Darmian, by the way, what is still up with his fucking facial hair? Like, he still is that... It's like the mutton chops, but he's, like, shaved half it off into pieces. Oh, he's great. He's like the... Just because he's just cause he's a footballer. If Jeff Hardy did it, you'd be grand. Oh, I wouldn't be saying yes, that. Yes, you would. You did let Jeff Hardy get away with any facial hair. I would be saying that. He, yeah, and he, and he, get rid of Jeff Hardy too. Jeff Hardy can do what he wants yeah exactly you can call him Jeff Hardy Je- he can call, yeah he can he can be busted for poppies in a different way talking about the heroin alright moving on to Premier League fixtures Sunderland and Arsenal um, poor Sunderland yeah this was a, 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 a mauling I would feel say poor Sunderland fans because there was 43,000 people they're still going every week Fair, but that's nice I, I, that's what I'm saying it's excellent but like Arsenal literally did not try, and they were like they could have put a few goals up. And then when they, when they, uh, they should have been given a penalty, and then uh, when Sanchez was pulled down, and then they went up and scored the other end uh, with a penalty of Defoe. But it was like if you were, it Defoe. was never even a p- p- chance in that game. You thought Arsenal will the, just try and the, we'll there's score. a great video for the uh, first goal where uh, they just focus on John O'Shea. John O'Shea looks back and he sees Sanchez and he's like, "All right, go there." He's like, I, I don't know who the other Coley. defender is. Coley's like, there, watch him. And I got up, looks back, still got time. Grant, looks back. Then he turns around, cross goes in, and Sanchez beats Coway, who a man is at like two feet bigger than him, and for a header. It was like the most, like, Sunderland are, my, they are now statistically the worst start to any Premier League team yeah, ever. Like, like the Derby. worse than Derby, worse than the Derby. worse than Villa. Yeah. They're worse than the other Sunderland Villa team. last year. They'll get Big Sam back and stay up. Villa doing well, though, aren't they? I can't believe, though, he hasn't been sacked this week. 
after that it was just they usually wait it till, was just they usually wait till the international break you're, first off you're right it was secondly r- the reports are the reports on Monday were that he's got one more game do they have Bournemouth this weekend yes I think like that's I think, a huge I think game they, I think they play Liverpool on like two weeks or something and I'm like Gable like, God, I can't wait. But like that, it was literally no, like there sad. was there was times in that Kicking match where you'd look at the players and they just didn't like they didn't even care. They're not very good anyway, but they didn't even care. They're if you if you're Jermaine Defoe, the only person who is scoring uh, for them now and again, and he still has a good bit of quality to him, in my opinion, especially if we're talking about fucking Berbatov going to Swansea, would you look for a move in January? Yeah, I'd, I'd fuck off. Yeah. I would. I would get out of Dodge. I'd f- like Shea Given did that with Newcastle. He still, he he, I would say Jermaine Defoe is in the top 10 finishers in the league still. Not strikers, but finishers, yeah. F- absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay. So he scored, was it, five or six goals this year? Who did Giroud come on for? He came on for um, Iwobi and then Giroud okay, yeah. scored with his two touches. Yeah, so yeah, Sanchez. Three touches the ball and scored twice. Sanchez with two and Giroud with two. But that, that's sorry, Sunderland are in serious shit like you look around the team though there's no one good so yeah i don't know okay really well, bad. Uh, the thing is with city and liverpool um and maybe it's you know it's just because of us three you know dan and pep and us in liverpool we've been talking a lot about them as the main title contenders but i guess it's only fair that we started talking about arsenal in the same respect because you know as the, well, one thing is their form in November is their worst, statistically their worst month every season. So we'll see. But if if that doesn't happen this year, like, w- why why not Arsenal? Well, if it doesn't happen this month because they're playing a lot of big teams as well. They've got Spurs next week. Oh, shit, yeah. So they've actually got a, a few tough games as well. So if they can actually get through it, then they'll be like, that's actually pretty good. I think, I don't think they win the league. I never thought they would. More will. chance of Liverpool. I think there's probably more chance Liverpool. Yeah. So do I. Yeah. In reality, um, I think the the no Europe helps, but I think um, I just say, I just think Arsenal like when they are good, they are like they're just irresistible. This year been fantastic, like they yeah. are so good. Haven't but had when very many bad, tough like, games. Though. They still miss Cazorla big. They haven't had many tough games, and they do miss him, and they they will always have their injuries thing. In fact, there's five guys that are question mark for this weekend. Like I still think John is John. You said Thursday like like the way you said Arsenal be like they'll steamroll all the teams in the bottom ten. Like, uh, like, which they have been doing, to be honest. So, like, what they, what have their tough games been so far? Besides, well, Liverpool, Liverpool, Liverpool at home, they they, be, they beat at home. they beat Chelsea. They beat Chelsea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that was when Chelsea were playing four at the back. Yep, they were a bit ropey. Um, that's kind that of game. really it. They haven't really played anyone yet. Mm. But again, you can only play what's in front of you. But I don't really look really look at fixtures and go, oh, if he wins, is he wins out of it? Everyone has to play everyone anyway. So, but I think with Arsenal, it's. Uh, I think any more more of those teams around them, they're so mentally fucked if they lose one or two, or yeah. if they go on a bad run, or when all the injuries kick in because they will kick in. Like they've no left back this week, for example. I'd say yeah. um, Jenkins is going to have to go left back if Bellerin is fit. Bellerin might even be fit, so they're going to have five fit. out this week. Walcott might be fit. Gibbs isn't fit as you said. Gibbs, Monreal, Walcott, Monreal, yeah. Bellerin, Cazorla. Yeah. So they've got a lot of injuries as well. So it, it could just it could just be the usual domino effect what happens to them. Sure. But I think. If they can win a win over Spurs, it'll do them confidence good. But I think they're still. I just, I just don't trust Wenger to win a league. I can trust him to get top four. United <laughs> you know and Burnley. I mean? like no, I, no, no. Well, yeah, just, I, they will get top four no matter what. I'll be supporting them. They are my Champions League team this year. Arsenal. Yeah, and they scored a lot of goals. Yeah, absolutely. We'll get to that in a minute. Um, <laughs> sorry, a burglar has just come in. Uh, Man United. <laughs> you put on your head. Yeah. Sorry, Claire walked in with a balaclava on. <laughs> um, no, it's James McLean. <laughs> you heard we were talking about poppies and he came if you in didn't. Uh, Man United and Burnley. I'm sad to say that I missed this affair. Um, I know that you, John I brought the news it. to you in the pub. <laughs> you were like like a, a little boy going around Smith's Toy Store. Like I, was. <laughs> I was. Which is very mean. And it's only because of Wham Dose and Burnley. You know what I mean? They've um, beaten Liverpool and Everton at home. Uh, they've drawn to Man United. They were very unlucky against Arsenal in the last kick of the game. Yep. So like they've they've done well against some of the year, bigger mate. team, and all they're doing is defending for their lives. <laughs> to be fair, this match was like ridiculous. I think United had thirty seven shots. Uh, Herrera was sent off, and you really shouldn't have been. Uh, you could. I don't think United should have had a penalty, but 
I can understand, like, Darmian threw himself to the ground, but there was a little... Well, that's this is the biggest story of, of it all. Um, but who would have taken the penalty? Because yeah, e- 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 Eber was having a tough time. Eber really needs to be dropped. I feel bad for him yeah. playing today. Was it 13 <laughs> shots or something he had? Yeah. yeah. Which is more than, like, most teams have had. Him. Yeah, and he m- missed a sitter in the last minute as well, from two years out. So, the big news coming out of it is one day after getting, uh, after getting his first fine this year, uh, which he had many of last season. Mourinho uh, gets sent to the stands for protesting this penalty John's talking about. Decides to ask a fan if he can sit in the front row, which Dan astutely pointed out meant he was closer to the game than he was <laughs> on the touchline. Brilliant. And then he was told, this is outrageous. You're you can't closer get to the ground, yeah. So he'll, he'll, that'll be another th- uh, sanction come down on him, coming down Did on him. Did you see that thing Graham Paul wrote? No. Uh, Graham Paul wrote that, like, Clattenburg turns again, won't give a home decision like if the crowd turns against him and like he saw he cited uh the last match this happened was a merseyside derby in 2007 like uh but apparently like there's a uh there's like this howard webb i did an interview there with uh the football ramble and he told a story that uh like he couldn't really like say give names but like apparently everyone hated graham pole in the referee sort of like the referees have their own like club or whatsapp group and everyone hated graham pole <laughs> And, appa- and apparently the story is uh, when Graham Paul gave three yellow cards <laughs> to one p- to that. one player in the World Cup. Do you remember this? 2006. Yeah, yeah he did that. Apparently, one of the referees texted the group going, "There is a god," <laughs> because he's, like he's done. Like, he's been found out. <laughs> yeah, but so apparently, like he's uh, like he's not well liked. So I like it, it's a mental thing to say to say that like a ref won't do that. I don't think like if. Howard Webb is on the BT uh, European show and whenever there's a penalty and like you can see like you know all the stuff you, if you're a fan you call for it a penalty and he goes you really like for second yellows and penalties it really has to be a penalty they're not going to give it for something small and frankly I did think it was a dive by Darmian but I do think United were unlucky I think they, the, the keeper played an absolute storm. any other day United could have won that game 3-0 yeah. but yeah. like but um, there's another thing they could do is Zlatan and actually put him at number 10 and have Rashford go ahead of him because when Zlatan actually started dropping deep and doing one two the box, he actually was quite dangerous. He's an incredible passer. I, I remember the goal, the the Sweden goal, uh, the own yeah, goal yeah, Clark. Yeah, it was yeah. the same thing. He did that two or three times yeah. that game. He did a quick run through and then he ran onto the left hand side of the box, cutting in the six yard box, mm-hmm. trying to square it down for some. Uh, the back. thing about him being a number ten as well is it gives more opportunity for the centre forward and the wingers to be played in by him but also run ahead of him constantly which means that he can be teed up on the edge of the box we're, we're, and tr- we're changing formation every week here for United yeah. so at the moment then we're nearly end up at Rashford up front Pogba on the left oh yeah Pogba on the left yeah. but it's Matt true on the right and Schweinsteiger like if there was the one guy in the league just... that you'd want to tee up on the edge of the box in reality more than any midfielder Zlatsy would put it away all the time the there, power there's that a uh, great stack going around now that Joe Allen has been in uh, com- uh, involved in more goals than Pogba and Ibra combined. That, that must be for club and country, though. No, it's just club. Just yeah, for he did score two for Wales. Like one. Yeah, but he's one saying it's not cl- no, club. Is, is he the best central midfielder in England at the moment? Joe Allen, probably. Yeah. Mm. Is there a better one? Definitely best British midfielder. I think. Jordan. I think he's probably the best midfielder. I think jo- Jordan's putting on a good show. Yeah, but he's not scoring goals. Oh, in front of God. Uh, Henderson's yeah. had his best season for his definitely. Yeah, well, that's because yeah. he's doing what he can do, which is pass <laughs> from deep and run a bit. Uh, okay, so Middlesbrough and Bournemouth. 2-0 to Middlesbrough at home. Ramirez uh, got one of the goals of the season. Like yes. an absolute... Uh, it's hard to describe what like happened. <laughs> he just ran. <laughs> and then the finish was incredible. He, he did sim- uh, like We'll talk about Ozil's goal later, surely. But like Jesus. similar sort of just cut back. And... Uh, yeah, it's just and Stewie nice. Stewie down down on his left peg. Well, that that was a cutback because poor Negredo can't score. <laughs> like it was an open goal down and couldn't have missed. I found it some apparently the Middlesbrough fans aren't a big fan of Stuart Down. Why? Uh, apparently he's just lazy and he doesn't like. I don't know. Maybe he just expected kind of left them. Yeah, yeah, but he came back to when they were in the championship. I, People I usually like when there's a return. Though, he's don't not very good as well. Maybe that's, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's the main thing. I wonder was he ever good? Well, he was brilliant when he had a left foot when England two thousand four when they had no left footed player. Like from like 50 players to pick from they had no left footed player except for Ashley Cole that's right and they put everyone there left mid and that Downing was the saviour but he played for Middlesbrough yep um, Spurs and Leicester they seem to be the ying to each other's yang these days and they always have pretty good games um, Spurs are just not really able to score very much you know who can score who Musa ah uh, yes we'll get to that later <laughs> uh, <laughs> but um. Uh, Janssen getting... Uh, is this his first league goal? 
Uh, yeah, but it's yeah. he hasn't scored from open play yet. It was and another he's penalty. Not, it wasn't a penalty. He's he's not good, lads. He's good in terms of no, like Dan, he's holding not, a ball. No, 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 not, no, not, not good, but he's not a good. He's not going to score your goals. No. Okay, like since Harry Kane has been injured, right? It's they don't have many options. But I just think that they're even worse. Do you know what I mean with oh, him I'd in the team? Yeah, there's front. no out. Well, no, because yeah. even Sun Sun started off. Uh, Strong. The Kane injury strong, but even him, he's. They're, they're not even. They're not even having shots. Uh, before Ericsson had a shot yesterday in the Champions League, I think they'd gone like eighty-three minutes of football without like a shot. They're just not shooting. Yeah. And uh, that Moose's goal was the first goal they've conceded from play. Uh, they have the best goalkeeper and centre back, I think, in the league. So they're I think not conceding a lot of goals. Maybe but they're well, really. Oliver Al- Al- is that still injured though. Well, I yeah. meant for Tongan, but Oliver Al- 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 better. Yeah. yeah so. Do you see who got the assist for Musa? Jimmy Imagine having him as your captain. All right, so moving on to we'll have a look at the fancy later. We oh, oh, sh- do we have to? I don't. I don't even know, and I don't want to know. Uh, Watford versus Hull. Hull defended well. They're definitely going down the season. So ah, uh, they're terrible. They're so bad. But uh, <laughs> Watford, don't, Snodgrass are any good players. Injured. How many professional players do they have fit and available? Uh, Fourteen or something. Fifteen. No, they've gone. They bought a few players. So I think yeah, a few come back. Came back. Really Snodgrass has gone down. So they're almost a real team again. But they're not putting in. They're not putting in the spirited performances. Since Michael Phelan has taken over. Like I thought, he'd be first manager act. Like he's probably going to be second manager act. Yeah. He could actually nearly have the shortest reign. Yeah, as a Premier League manager, because like he, he, this can't keep going on. No. Nah. Like, Since he signed that piece of paper, it's yeah. been all downhill. We say it every week. Uh, the goal. Pierre. Oh, it was no goal. It was, it was a terrible match. But Watford are. They're seventh in the league or somewhere, and they're really they're. With their mad manager, they're doing pretty well. And the way they're going again, they'll get enough points before Christmas <coughs> to stay up. Uh, West Brom at the Hawthorns against uh, Man City uh, 4-0. Um, the real best centre midfielder in England, um, Good Dungan, uh, with a brace um, before he scored against really Barcelona. Really the English media trying to... All of them deciding how to pronounce that. Okay, so we when, when we were looking at him from afar, we, also, we always used to pretty much say phonetically as in... Gundogan. Yeah. Um, but they're saying on commentary now, Gundogan, isn't yeah. it? Or Gundogan. There's no O, mate. Yeah. Maybe if you're watching, f- listen to fucking Kerry FM. Gundogan down now against <laughs> Barcelona. Well, some Messi's pro- been, Messi's in the pub. <laughs> the pub? Because <laughs> he's on the pitch. That's what... <laughs> Do you not listen to Quirk now? Do you not listen Some to Quirk? Don't listen to Quirk. Do you, you not, not listen, listen to Red you FM, John? Not, do you not? No. You don't listen to Red FM. No, I'm busy doing other things. He's going to be on say gig. All right. This so. is like the phone-ins where the lads are like, give him a bunch of Mars bars, toughen them up and all that sort of stuff. This was, you never listen to the new stock phone-in. Oh, that's a great old time. I don't get to hear it as much as I like. Uh, City were sensational here. Um, the, the whole park, the bus kings that are West Brom really... Weren't able to. Yeah, uh, West Brom really like once uh, you, once you score, you're like Ireland's new uh, international Daryl Horgan one one over in Russia. It's one 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 over in Russia. It's a shame you down a massive league of Ireland. Wait, hold, hold on, who, who, who are Dundalk playing? Oh, yeah. playing like, Zenit. I, I didn't have time to get the same. They're playing Zenit again. Zenit away. away. I thought they, I honestly thought the away like it already happened. That wasn't Tala last week. I know, Chelsea. but I thought there was a game before that. Nope. So, never mind. You know you're um, on a football show, right? I know. Um, so there you go. City. Doesn't watch much of the day. I'll do I, I do. Well, actually, I, don't want, I haven't seen as much as I'd like to. I have to go. I have to source my own clips. You didn't even <laughs> see Mass. Uh, anyway, great city by great performance by City, though. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Aguero is the best striker in the league, probably. Mm-hmm. Well, except for Big Fur, but we'll get onto him later. Uh, Aguero's second goal was magic, I thought. Uh, but yeah, City. Uh, have had a good week. First clean sheet with John Stones in their team. Oh, Jesus. This year. Fair play. Poor John Stones. That's because uh, they only got Did one. Did company start? Uh, I think it was Adam Mendy, I think. Okay. I think. Uh, yeah, no, yeah, I think it was. Uh, company went off the Liverpool game the last week but because he couldn't do more 45. Obviously, he's probably listening to doctors now. Sure. Saying like, yeah, maybe if I feel something, don't go on. Just come off. Yeah. Everton and uh, West Ham skipping the game of the weekend there. Oh shit! Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, so it was actually the game of the weekend. Uh, Liverpool and Crystal Palace. Uh, this was absolute insanity. 
Uh, was it more insanity? I predicted it'd be four two. Never know. <laughs> I think it was was it one no, all it when you predicted four two? One one. I yeah. said it'd be four two. Okay, so 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 Chan scored the first goal with a slight defection, really good build up, and then How did that goal got down now. I don't know because you see, I don't watch football, right? No, but also you were taking a whiz. No, I was taking the biggest pub shit I've ever had in my life. I was Messi, Messi, can you pass the toilet roll? Because of course he was there with me in the pub and Red FM. Harkening back to a joke from about two minutes ago. <laughs> Keep up, mate. <laughs> Stig up, mate. Who's the name of that old <laughs> that GAA commentator, Mickey <laughs> McSluttery or something? Or Are you talking about the famous oh, one? Or Veracu or what's that? you still talking about your shit, mate. Yeah, your man. <laughs> uh, what's his name? Michal O'Mark That's you know. it, yeah. yeah. Michal Merco. That's it. I'm He'd having a toffee. He'd be commentating. Close on that. your eyes. I said close them. <laughs> that guy. <laughs> <laughs> the guy who's getting all his brick from or all his uh, book from Vision Impairment now, yeah. exploiting the blind. Um, okay, and then um, Matip um, had a really stupid pass to Lovren, who tried to uh, make a clearance, but really just set up MacArthur for one of uh, four headers in this game. You could, sh- you could hear Lovren just saying "Have it" and booming it into the air. <laughs> Brilliant. Lovren, <laughs> Lovren made good by scoring his own header before MacArthur scored another header. Uh, then uh, Matip with a header. And then in the second half, Firmino scored a goal. That should have been disallowed. But uh, in theory. Yeah. In theory. Uh, well, look, you'd like to go by the rules of the game, but, but seriously, 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 come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. And do you know what? The shirt wasn't fully off when it went over the line. It was just mostly Speaking off. Speaking of uh, referees doing a good job, Mike Dean did a brilliant job uh, at the uh, Bir- Birmingham Aston Villa match um, so uh, Birmingham scored and um, they all went off then and they started celebrating I think they ran in front of the Aston Villa fans to annoy them I think ah uh, yeah and um, so it was all they were all on their own side of the pitch and then Birmingham and then Aston Villa actually picked up the ball and were ready to go and just like just run, run the ball in because if everyone's in the own half the ref can essentially blow the whistle thinking they're, they're ready if you're in the own half if, you, if you're not ready that's your own fault so they're all celebrating and apparently he grabbed one of the Birmingham players back. It's like, it's like if you go through there, they're going to tip off and you'll wait on the other side. Is that not interfering too much? They're not match fixing. No. Good old Mike Dean. That sounds a little bit like favouritism. No? See about well, I think it's common sense as well that he didn't want a goal to win like that, which I think is fine. Is that not a heavy influence on the game? Pretty heavy, I'd say. I think he said if, if, you're, you go, he said if you go to that half, they're going to kick off. He said to them. Okay. I don't think that's wrong. Okay, I because it's a conversation, though, isn't it? It's it's weird. It's, you don't see it done, but I yeah. I think it was fine. Okay. Just like that Firmino thing. I just like I think you know you don't like to see goals ruled out or things happen like that that shouldn't happen. Yeah, you know. So what uh, was a problem though yeah. was uh, Sky's booking of matches this weekend because on Sunday they had a uh, <coughs> Birmingham uh, Aston Villa and then Everton West Ham. So if you're like me and was on the laptop with the matches on in the background, couldn't exactly tell when one match ended and the other one started. Yeah, we'll get to the the ah, the, so oh, yeah, the Everton good. match, but uh, <laughs> you could have had the, the volume on, John. I was not. I was watching a film. I was watching something good. <laughs> so this whole Liverpool uh, uh, 20, uh, 13, 14, uh rebirth here. It, this this really encapsulated it in the sense that we'll just outscore you kind of thing. What can Liverpool do uh, to stop leaking goals? Because if there is going to be, if there's anything that's going to be their downfall, bar two of the main four lads getting injured, uh, it's it's the fact that this uh, this defence can't keep a clean See, sheet. I don't, like, they're not keeping a clean sheet, but other than 13 and 14, it, they were just bad. They were just leaking chances. Well, this defense is just giving like yeah, it, that's like all the perfect, goals are yeah. our own fault. So I honestly do think, and it's gonna sound metal, but I think Liverpool are actually like defending okay, but they're just silly mistakes, sort of thing. You know what I mean? Like no team is creating chances against them. But he, but even in the Arsenal game at the start of the year, when like remember yeah. you, you guys went riot four one, and it's like yeah. this is gonna be any score. Yeah, and then Chamberlain scored like was it a minute later after Mane's. Worldly. It was after it was, it was from 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 the touch off. Yeah, pretty much. And then it was like, oh shit. And then it was it was panic for like fifteen minutes. And yeah. Arsenal nearly got a draw. Yeah. And they should have. I don't think you've defended br- that badly, but you haven't been good. And I think the issue. Well, is I think that was particularly your two bad fullbacks example. plays wingers right. So that leaves two. Yeah. You've got Henderson there as well. 
the idea is that, know, that that I, I, I don't trust your two center halves. Like many, I, don't, I don't like any of your. Well, your center, they're okay. They're not great. It's I don't, the, I'm it's not the, sure about it's your the, keeper. Uh, as well. It's the Barcelona thing with coattails that a shitload of Premier League teams do now, where the wing backs are when we're in possession supposed to take a almost touch line uh, and halfway line position, and the centre back split yeah. and Henderson sits about two yards in front of them in, the, in between. It's them. virtually a three at the back when when in possession. Yeah, I don't like it. Like and and the thing is, if Chan was there, his distribution wouldn't be as good, but his defensive capabilities would be better. But the one well, thing Chan, you could Chan goes missing a lot. The one thing you could when you say though, as well about the formation that you play is that you play a, a, th- a three you play three forwards, but they play a th- they're narrow. They're very narrow forwards. They're, they're not, not wide. Wingers. No, that's so what the fullbacks are so nar- and that's what the fullbacks are used for. So when you've got you've like your lovely little one two touches. Generally, you see one of your full backs. Full backs are actually the furthest player forward. Yeah, the full back will get beyond the man. Yeah, and yeah, absolutely. So you actually look at that, and then you've got a runner for midfield, and then Lana yep. is doing his bit in the hole. Yeah, and that leaves about three. At the and three sometimes there. the runner, whether it's Chan or maybe you or need a bit more pace at the back. Maybe that. I don't. Know, but again, it's a set piece. Pace, pace in our centre backs. Yeah, his name is Sacco. Moving on. Yeah, to he's Ever- also not very good. <sighs> Just stop it. Is he still better than Kishelny? Is he? Yes, if he got his chance, yes, he's not better. If he got his stop. chance, if he got his There's chance, a good start. Uh, he had his chance for two years, three years. Liverpool scored more goals in that match than Spurs have in their last six. Jesus Christ! You know, who, you know who scored more goals in Man United tonight, Fenerbahce, because they scored another one, and it's a uh, Lens, the former Southampton Lens. man. Did he played for Southampton. Didn't he? he sure did. Yeah, was that Sunderland or Sunderland? Sunderland, red and white team, Stoke. Yes, fast Dutchman. We I believe. Football, I promise. It was a free kick. Fast Dutchman. Partial credit. He is. Okay, Everton versus West Ham. First thing I want to say about this match is after Barkley scored, it was the most we are England la 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 from uh, Alan Smith and whoever the the play-by-play guy was. They wouldn't fucking shut up about the manager has been speaking to Barkley. Barkley's form. What does this mean for the England team? Oh, this is what he has in his locker. I don't know if you guys watched this, but it was the most horrible yeah, half an hour. Good game, but like it wasn't. But that's all they, they was always sort of do that. You oh, know, it was horrible. Anyway, uh, and but then Lukaku was very good again. Well, it, the, the Lukaku goal he's was having uh, his good month, right? the, Come off, he's, he's, he's a good player, John. Like the, you have to get used to The Lukaku he goal was uh, bred from he he was Balassi um, getting to a, a clearance from West Ham before the defender even touched the ball. When the defender was standing beside the ball, and Balassi was at the edge of the box, it was incredible. He ran like a lunatic and literally slid in for a tackle to assist uh, Lukaku to uh, Do you practically think West goal. Ham are in a relegation scrap? Or will they, get, or will they just kind of climb out? I think, as in they've I had think a, they such a bad start. I like think they might be all right. I think they'll be okay. I think they'll be okay. I think they'll be all right because uh, two of the relegation things are already taken with Sutherland and Hull, in my opinion. <laughs> yes, so I, I think Middlesbrough, will be, Middlesbrough or Swansea will be the other two. I think West Ham have enough. Uh, moving on to Sunday's action, uh, Southampton hosted Chelsea. Uh, the big two guys getting on the score sheet, Hazard and Costa. Um, the Victor Moses Renaissance. Just it's just, just, this really is it. And week by week, I just find it unbelievable. The fact that he's playing a position he never played in before. Mm. The fact that Quadrado, who is like, if you look at like the model professionals for that position, mm. it's, it's like Danny Alves, Lamb, and Quadrado. Yeah. And it's like, nah, Victor Moses. Yeah, I've, the stat that came out after this match was mental. That was Costa's 40th Premier League goal, and he got there quicker than Aguero. Like, and considering it's, it's like when, 68 remember, games or something. Yeah, but you remember Jesus. how bad he was last year. That's I know he stat, had games like. where obviously he was injured last year, Rod, but he also had mm. games last year where he wasn't scoring. He was he's kind of dropped off a while last year, wasn't he? There's a great picture of Conte hugging him after yes, the man. match, and he just looks absolutely miserable. Like like he's never been hugged before, and he can't understand what's happening, which might explain his miserable you know, you know, face. Uh, excellent for Chelsea's here. I think his class is Matic. Again, I th- I think he's something else. You think he's reclaimed the form from his first season? Yeah, like well, I, no one, no Chelsea player really had it. William was okay last year, but like no one. No, had, no I think he his has first a, season was two. Uh, no, no, ago. no one say no one had it at all last year. But yeah, I, yeah. I I always rated Matic as a I think Kante top player. He's there. brilliant, he's but so he looked good. he looked awful last year. No, but every everyone was shit last year. I thought he was. He I ha- thought he was the person who fell the most last year. He has, has Hazard. He has Kante share sharing all the. Ses fell off. For sorry, sorry, John. Ses fell off in the second half of his first season with Chelsea. Whereas Mat, whereas Matic was was the only good thing about that midfield, and besides Hazard going from young player of the year to like scoring like not scoring for six months, I think Matic was the 
biggest fall from grace in that. Well, I, I suppose we're talking about Costa as well. Cost. I, I, I just think Matic is so important. Him and Kante seem to be doing well in there. If you want to... Because um, the three at the back is tactically yeah, tough. Yeah, it right? is. But if you if there is any two midfielders to protect a three at the back, even, even if you permitted one to be a runner and the other one stays, it's those two. In the league. It'd be interesting when Oscar and William get back. I wouldn't bring them back. I'd, I'd leave the team the exact way it is. I'd... It's I unfortunate. I, I'd like to try to accommodate William. Um, Oscar is dead to me. Well, Pedro is. Pedro does is kind of. I don't see him in that team. Pedro's been really good, like very underrated. This I, year. I think William would do better than Pedro in most aspects of the game. I think William's probably better technically, but I think what Pedro's doing is is box to box running and everything. I think it's it's important in that kind of formation. I and disagree. You've got ha- I disagree. Hazard and Costa, Pedro. I, I like that. Up front. The only person I could see coming back, and we can talk about John Terry later, but the only person I could see coming back. Uh, that would be a positive is 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 William for, for Pedro just because he was the only good player last year and like Pedro has been way better than he was last year but we're going back to the whole everyone was shit last year William's a better goal scorer and as well the one thing they don't have with William being injured is they don't have anybody to put in free kicks don't say anything uh, bad about John Terry he's a bit worried about his figure lately did you see the video he put up go on just a video of like him uh, making like a smoothie and then just look uh, like pointing the phone at like a book that he just got a hardcore a bulletproof diet book is he has he gone a bit soft in his he injury must be, he must be afraid to he can't come back into that team let's be honest David right? Luiz has been great as well I great in the sense that he hasn't done anything terrible yeah and he yeah, sure. they, they've kept so many clean sheets it, no, like he has well they've been, kept a few in the last few matches but it's Sorry. weird I, I, I said no one could take set pieces they do have him yeah, he, he's to be taken fair. a few. Have they been conceded since the Arsenal game? It? It's incredible. I, don't, I think top of my head. Yeah, I'm pretty Remember sure. Remember, Conte's like you have to go three at the back. Yes, <laughs> that was the answer. Okay, we're actually we're running a bit late here, so uh, let's get through Stoke and Swansea. Uh, it quickly. happened. I I personally liked Monday Night Football doing 40 minutes on Joe Allen. Joe uh, Allen with two assists. Was Stoke or uh, we're good. Uh, Shack attack went off injured. Very sad. He's, so been, he's been their renaissance get man. Into a bit of form. Stoke are climbing up the league now. Stoke, uh, if they win They'll this finish week. ninth in the league, guys. They'll finish ninth again, like I said they would. And we all, I said I said they wouldn't make top 10. But I did say if if they did because of Shaq. All right, let's go through uh, Tuesday's Champions League stuff first. Um, I guess we'll start with uh, City and Barcelona. Uh, it was fucking incredible. Uh, the second half especially was as end-to-end of everything, I think. And of course, because it's a... It's, uh, Barcelona, no one's going to criticise their defence. Uh, yeah. just I, it's, who didn't it's, criticise it's of, No, but it's one of those things where, oh, it's a great end-to-end game, rather than, why is everyone's defence shocking? I thought City's yeah. defence is poor. I, I have, to be honest. I have no, no idea. Yeah, who, no one's going to call that. Yeah. I have no That's idea. Like, oh, it's a great end-to-end game, two of the most entertaining teams in the world. It's a bit of both, really. I have no idea who's going to win the Champions League this year. I don't think it'll be Barca. Uh, I no, don't think it'll be I anyone. Think so either. I, 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 I think it could be Atletico Madrid. When was the last time Messi was so absent in the second half of every game? He was poor. That, I, I forgot was... he was on the pitch. He did well yeah. first half. I thought first half Barca were in complete control. Of the game. I don't know if he didn't start the move and score the first goal. If he if he did anything in the first half either. But like who stood out in the first half? I thought I thought Barca. De Bruyne. <laughs> De Bruyne. I thought was poor first half. The whole game. But I thought this second guy, half he was much better. I this second, guy. Second half much better. But I thought Barca were in control until. Uh, actually, thought, I wouldn't blame Sergio Roberto for the bad pass. I blame Mascherano because he gave him actually no angle to go anywhere. Mm. Mascherano actually ran uh, forward, which closed the angle off and brought two players towards him. If Mascherano had dropped mm-hmm. two yards, it would have brought the angle back. And then they could actually square to Stegen and then go again if they wanted to do it. But like, if that goal didn't go in, I don't know. I think City probably still would have won the game. But yeah. I just I, the game it, completely it, turned when that happened. No, and no, it certainly did. And and PK no, the team that, was yeah. huge. This is what I was going to say. Like uh, City, like by the end of the game, I think that your automatic first reaction is, ah, City deserved that. But if Gomez, who had the unenviable task of replacing Iniesta in centre mid, uh, had scored when Suarez made Otamendi look like a pensioner. He knew he was going to do that as well. It was a, it was a difficult oh, man. run in a straight line, nutmeg. Oh, you man. know what he's going to do with vintage Suarez. But Gomez, like, it was a great shot. <laughs> it's just unfortunate. It was a great shot. It was. <laughs> it was a lovely <laughs> shot. It was. Like, I was kind of like, oh. So it hit the bar. If it had gone in, it could have been very, very different. Yeah. Uh, it was uh, it was definitely the my favourite uh, game uh, the entire week, like, actually. The just didn't seem to go out of play. <laughs> it was, yeah, it was for not John. I like the Real Madrid game. <laughs> okay, let's Any move thoughts on. on Pep? Let's move. Uh, I t- it was a very weird match. It could have gone either. It was impressive. Like. It could have gone either way. But, but he d- here's the one thing he did. 
and I don't watch Barcelona every week, but it, just reading recaps and looking at the highlights. First time that Barcelona really never looked like Barcelona. Especially in second well, half. It, well, you have to do something. You have to be direct against them and press them. And you, because they're not going to kick it long. Yeah, if you press them high and make them make a mistake, and if they press you, if you can beat that press, and the defense that they had was poor. I think the keeper could have done better for the De Bruyne place. goal. And I think the, that the keeper should have saved it. Maybe. Course, should have saved is it. Is it unfair to say about Pep that, like, obviously beating Barcelona is a big deal for any team and any manager? But if there's one guy that, by rights, should know how to beat Barcelona, is it not him? Well, not many of those players are still there. Well, he'd, ah. he'd, know, he'd, know, he'd know the ethos of the club and how they're going to go. They're going to they're gonna keep playing it from the back. Yeah. They're not going to stop doing that. And especially with Ter Stegen, who is, you know, loves, literally loves having the ball in the six-yard box. Who was his first choice, by the way, it's come out? I, uh, yeah. Well, the weren't going to sell him because he's young. Yeah. I didn't rate uh, Sterling when he was at Liverpool, but now every time I watch City, he seems to be like, Involved in everything that doesn't end well for them. <laughs> you know, like, all their attacks that look like, oh my god, what a move. He, he just never seemed... Like, even their third goal, that eventually came from Navas going down the side Sterling was at. Like, there's no like, doubt he's, I think he's Na- improved like, I think he's a year. better player than Navas, but I just think Navas has, like, yeah. a final pass. I just think Sterling just never... Doesn't have a final I think, ball. I think Pep is improving him. I, and I think he will improve him. But in all honesty, right? And what happened... What's with them, um, Sané? Where's he at? I think he's just he's young. He'll get inside eventually. He's only 20 years old, isn't he? If they had uh, a really, really, really world-class winger in Sterling's position, um, I think they'd be easily, arguably, one of the best, if not the best attack in the world. I think I he brings up there. Sterling. I think he's doing well this year. But I think John's right. A lot of things that he's heavily involved in are the things that jo- just don't come off. If it's Aguero, De Bruyne, and Silva in a triangle, you, you're like, there's going to be a shot on target. Do you know what I mean? With Sterling, it's kind of like he'll run and run and run, and he might make the He's right still choice. Young. I, I think Pep will improve him, but he has to do. Uh, okay, anything else that stands out here? Celtic drew to Borussia Montenglodge back. Uh, anything about that? Bren's still looking for his first away win in Europe. Uh, they Ever. Actually, they were lucky right? to get the draw. I think Gladbach went back to 10 It was ten, funny, though, when, when Celtic, equalized, Celtic equalized. Celtic just like parked the bus. And it's like, guys, you have to win this match. <laughs> like they, like, they were delighted with the point. It's like... You're not going to beat Barca or City in your last two games. Well, Brent said they can, so let's see. They won't, they won't in that hoop. Um, okay, so uh, Bayern Munich defeated Eindhoven after going a goal down. Uh, they won 2-1. Uh, uh, on Madrid the Atletico Madrid match, uh, they scored in the last minute with Griezmann. Yep. And it was like one of those where um, Griezmann scored. He got like the same goal twice, which was like a little dink over the keeper. It's a nice finish, but... Uh, the referee, uh, the linesman flagged for offside, and the referee didn't call it because the last click came off the head of the defender. Oh, so he's still onside. So I just like it was good referee and very good referee. Seems to be the theme of the show so far. Benfica defeated uh, Dinamo Kiev. Um, scored. Did he? He did for Benfica. Yeah, <sighs> so that's where he is. <laughs> um, Basel lost to PSG. Um, PSG are not doing very well. PSG probably. scored in the last minute. Yeah. Uh, the right back get, getting what looked like a stunning volley, but the player's reaction just honestly looked like he missed it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like it was an absolute like there was a lot of really nice goals in the Champions League, and that was actually going to be my goal of the week. Uh, I watched the European goal show, and I think the Ozo goal had just happened before. We're just about like, there. Yeah, but like the PSG goal, I was like, that's amazing, and even Gareth Bale's goal. But uh, Ooh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, um, so yeah, the Ozo goal. Um, it was a, it was a close enough match in the sense that. It was obviously 3-2, three, three, um, but it was uh, Arsenal were 2-0 down at one stage, and um, goals from Xhaka and Giroud, and then the second half was cagey as heck until this Ozil goal, where he did make four human beings look like fools, yeah. four professionals. We talked, uh, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, about how messy at one-on-ones just makes the game slow down. Like, Ozil was just taking touches that weren't necessary. Like, if any one of us had the ball, we just would have whacked it when we saw the keeper coming out. <laughs> but Ozil, like, flicked it over the keeper when that wasn't necessary because the keeper couldn't use his hands. And the keeper even threw his hands up to accept the red card and yep. still couldn't still get it. Still couldn't do it. And then and beat just, two, two other men. It was just one of those. And I know, like, people are going nuts like it was overrated, but I honestly thought, like, no, it was, it was, it was it, You just don't see stuff like that anymore. Yeah. Um, it's like, you know, in a, a late 90s, like, Del Piero goal, where he just makes, or Zidane goal before he moved. Just makes people look like fools. Uh, but the um, interestingly enough, um, I would have thought that Ozil would have topped this list, so I'm already giving you a hint. But statistically, at our friends at whoscored.com, who has been the best number 10 in the Premier League? Not in Europe, in the Premier League. 
this season. This season so far. It's Coutinho. It is. Yeah. I can't believe he's it. Got, he's got a few goals this year. Yeah. Both Coutinho and Ozil are having like very good seasons. Like, they really I are, think yeah. Ozil's scoring a lot of goals. And so, Coutinho was if I was um, an Arsenal fan, I would be sweating right now with Ozil in this contract. Well, well has, I, yeah. yeah. Like, imagine if both I, left in a free the same summer. Jesus. That's a... Uh, because like well, maybe if they won the league, they wouldn't mind. Like remember just last year, John, you said that there was a stat you saw that they couldn't play together. Yeah. But I think oh, I, I think it's definitely it. gone now. I, I think they're they're both very important. But that's like Sanchez couldn't play up front and he's doing all right now. So yeah, going to race through these Wednesday ones if you want to stop me at any point. Uh, There's nothing happening. Uh, Juve drew against Leon. The the lack of pace up front starting both Manzu Kitchen and Higuain was horrific. Mister Sitter, uh, Obama, I'll, I'll race through them. Because I, I watched them all. <laughs> Go for it. Uh, Higuain missed a sitter and then Leon got uh, an equaliser from a nice free kick into the box in the header. Uh, Aubameyang was dropped by Dortmund. Uh, what do you do? It was something... Uh, Don't know. Their the whole professional the squad's not doing They haven't announced they it. They won't announce it. But he was in the crowd wearing a trilby Madrid. hat. He was wearing a trilby and hat. And there was a lot of photos going around between him and Inspector Gadget. And it was absolutely <laughs> incredible how close they looked. Amazing. Uh, Fal- Falcao got a brace. Yeah. Falcao got a brace uh, against Moscow and his second goal was like might make the top five of a nice goals this week in Champions League was actually really nice but it was his first goal uh, since he played for Porto in Champions League like that was a long time ago uh, Seville uh, Zagreb went down to 10 men very early on uh, so Seville walked that match pretty easily Seville uh, still haven't conceded a goal along with Leicester yeah, uh, Leicester and Copenhagen team. literally nothing happened I think yeah. Kasper Michael made a good save this uh, Warsaw Real Madrid game this was like that episode of The Simpsons where Bart gets punished and can't go see the Itchy and Scratchy <laughs> movie and it turns out to be the best thing ever because the Warsaw fans had gotten in trouble because they're awful people and so the match had to be played in front of an empty stadium <laughs> it was all the fans celebrating when they scored oh, because it's like there's like 2,000 fans there going mad when they scored yeah, but, like, like, <laughs> yeah but like you're but like say if your mates work in the club they'll still sneak you in and all that apparently it was uh, they were all officials of UEFA <laughs> celebrating it was so funny because it was so because <laughs> there was so little noise the commentators had to say stuff and they're like they, Ronaldo was over a free kick just because it's Ronaldo it's like if this goes into the crowd how, do, how long will we have to wait to get the ball back I was like oh no they have the ball boys in the stadium now to go and get it <laughs> But, uh, honestly, uh, Real Madrid took a 2-0 lead. lead yeah. uh, similar to Arsenal against Sunderland. Weren't, weren't even trying, but they got two lovely goals. Bale with an incredible half volley, and then Benzema with a lovely team goal. And then Warsaw just came back and got three goals, and it honestly looked like uh, no Polish team had ever gotten points off uh, Real Madrid. And then uh, Kovacic, I think, Kovacic, got, the, yeah. got the equaliser. Uh, Leverkusen Spurs... Uh, Spurs are awful. Uh, Spurs are in real trouble now. They needed a miracle. They to haven't get won in like yeah. eight games. Remember that run silly run? They've been yeah. silently doing it, but even, no one even, noticing. Even if they win their their next fixtures, they still need other stuff to happen to guarantee going through. Right? They need to get at least four points. Okay, they well have to go to Monaco bad. and win, and the la- they should beat Moscow at home. Like, like Moscow are not good. And well, finally, the Porto th- game, John. Uh, the Porto game. I've. No recollection of anything. Well, no to Porto. But I think I did all right there. You did very well. Very, <laughs> very, very good very job. Well. Uh, so let's very see. Good. The Man United match is still happening. It'll probably... Still. Okay, 2-0 still. Um, all right, John, back to you again, because yeah. you're going to give us the teaser, which I got wrong last week, supposedly my stats. I misremembered. Apologies. I believe it was 24 losses in his last uh, 40. Okay, okay, so moving on. What is the teaser? Oh, wait, we have to do this now, don't we? We, we answer it now. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, if we can. Off your phone, mate. I'm just... Ah, uh, no! What? Zenit just scored. Who did? Zenit. Oh, fuck. Very sad. Yeah. Very sad. World on dark. Um, so it's done pretty well, only losing 2-1. Yeah. It's team with Witzel in midfield. Uh, we were just talking about Spurs and their awful record against... Uh, uh, their awful record in Wembley. So my thing is... Uh, when was the last time they won at Wembley and how many Spurs yeah the Capital One Cup just now no when they beat Chelsea in 2009 yeah yeah and uh, when did they win in 2009 it's an FA Cup semi-final oh and uh, you, you, you look at him spoof from over there thinking it's the 2008 one excuse me <laughs> I just said when they beat Chelsea yeah yeah 
Yeah, that's right. That was a couple of one cup when I was talking about. They yeah. beat Chelsea in that Spurs well. record uh, since then is. Uh, oh, that was Chelsea as well, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. Okay. They've oh. had six games and six defeats. <laughs> Look at this guy winking at me. <laughs> Look at the bollocks. All I'm saying Stealing is. Stealing my answer. Oh, that was against Chelsea. Yeah, all I'm, all I'm saying, way, yeah. all I'm saying is that I have gotten the most teasers right since we started the new teaser format. All yeah, right. That's very true. That's very true. All right. All right, O'Neill. No def- more defective questions next week, please. Oh yeah, okay, I'll do my best. <laughs> okay, moving on to the uh, the fantasy standings at the moment. Uh, Dan, I, I I don't want you to reveal anything, but you have uh, you've seen what what's going on here. And I John, didn't you didn't see, see anything. Any, oh Jesus, yes. no! <laughs> what? <laughs> I just, what? I just saw where it was. <laughs> All right, and here I was giggling about Musa. Obviously, you both have Sanchez in your team or something, right? No, I don't have Sanchez. Cunts. Okay, Tommy in 17th, Reg in 16th, uh, Becky in 15th, Rob in 14th. Fair play, Rob. It's the usual. Uh, He's pulled away. No, bottom, Rob, was, Rob was 16th there now for a while. Dave Rogers in 13th, Darren Hillard in 12th, Shane Hart moving up in 11th, James Byrne moving down to 10th, Ron O'Reilly, uh, Regis Kerr in 8th, uh, a huge drop from 3rd <laughs> to 7th through myself. <laughs> John Ca- John's ahead of me. <laughs> John has also dropped, but is still ahead of me. In six, Noel Keeley uh, holding it steady at five. Thirty years old this Saturday. Happy birthday, Noel! The winner of the uh, last season's ITK. No, the first one. First one. First ITK. Dan in fourth. Kenny in. Dan is ahead of both of us now. Ooh, ahead of me by twenty-one points. Ooh. Kenny Murphy in third. Dave Null. I did my transfer today, and I made the complete balls of it. I'll get back to that. I made my transfer yesterday. <laughs> I was like, "What the fuck am I doing?" I put Aspilicueta in right for Blind, and I was like. I could have put Sanchez in for Vardy. <laughs> anyway, and Stephen Vincent, uh, number one with 43 points in the lead. That's a good lead. He's about 100. No, he's not. He's about 70 points ahead of me. So, uh, so very, very well done. I, I had a good week this week. I, I was due. A fair, a fair play. It was due. All right. Uh, your goal of the week. I'll just get mine out of the way. was Gareth Bale. Uh, I went Ozil, Bale and Munier to Paris and Germain. I think he meant it, to be honest. Mm-hmm. I thought it was insane. Uh, Ozil, obviously, because... Yeah, took, had his lad out. Okay, John, your goal of the week, please. I'm sticking with Ozil. I just thought, you know, it was incredible. Sweet. Um, your hero of the week, Dan. Uh, Miroslav Klose retired there this week, so I, I think did. I think that's a good one. You know, sure. I didn't even know he was still playing. I thought he retired over the summer, but um, and also uh, Eamon Dunphy's, um, which is kind of slash on my spoofers, which is Musa Sissoko, because the Dunphy Sissoko. We didn't talk about Sissoko the, in that the Dunphy Champions Sissoko. Match. Uh, analysis pack at the end of the ma- match last night. I was actually in stitches laughing at like so, uh, Duff, Duff, Amy Duff was doing a pack on Sissoko and Dunphy then started laughing. I was looking at him here. Whoa! It's like literally and he, he lost the ball 31 times in the match. 31 times he gave the ball away. You know the only reason he went to Spurs is because he thought he deserved to play Champions League football. After the game the 5-1 game at the end of the season where he yeah. decided to try. It Incredible. was terrible. So yeah I'm going to put that as a dual Dunphy, Sissoko. So Dunphy's the hero, Sissoko, Sissoko's And spoofer. also close as the main one. Yeah. Okay. John, you were a hero and spoofer of the week now that Dan did two in a row there. He did the two in a week. Uh, my hero of the week and... The <laughs> Sorry, go on. Yeah, no. <laughs> You know you did. I know. Get that toffee out of here. <laughs> Put that <laughs> cigarette out. Uh, <laughs> uh, Pat Flynn... That's a made-up name. Oh, I forgot about... This was... It was the greatest fucking Pat Flynn retired, retired speech from, ever. Uh, Longford. Longford, but he's he's a league of Ireland. Like he's played for pretty much everyone. Like he played against Juventus in Juventus. But you're Rogers. ruining the you're ruining the thing. I'm going to read it all anyway. He put out a statement. Well, I'm telling Neil that. Yeah, into the microphone. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I don't mind who wants to tell me. Go ahead. <laughs> anyway, so he put out a statement, and it's just uh, it's just something magic. Today I retire, so I thought I better do a statement. I'm going to name drop a bit, so please forgive me. I didn't want to retire, but my legs don't move like they used to, and I'm the slowest player in the league. When the, when the <laughs> slowest player in the league says, I'll be your legs, I knew they had to call it a day. So thanks for that, Mark Rossiter. To Kira, my girlfriend, my Joey days, uh, and now my wife, uh, I finished in Longford. You were there for it all. Thanks for your patience, understanding, and keeping my feet on the ground. Leaving for work at 8 a.m., going straight to training when I'm getting home at 9 p.m. is tough. So to my kids, I apologize for missing uh, so much and looking forward to spending all my time with you. 
if you have the passion on the pitch if you have my passion on the pitch and your mom's passion in the bedroom you will excel in whatever you choose <laughs> they're gonna read that one day yeah. big th- <laughs> big thanks to my family who helped me much over the years especially my dad you went out of your way to help me i'll never forget that to my friends uh, who've been there since the start and supported me home and away thank you to my aunties and uncles who looked after me when i was, when I was club listening in england thank you to all my coaches managers physios kitman i've had thank you for all the time you put in to all my teammates thank you for your ability to adjust to playing with 10 men most weeks to the referees i apologize for my tackles and colorful language that led to them colorful cards my wife would like to thank you for the hundreds of euros and fines i had to pay because of you to the fans of waterford thanks for making me a cult hero to the fans of shells it's my biggest regret of my career that i got you relegated when i played for you the huge club shouldn't be in this situation to the pats fans i got paid for doing what you do watching games from the bench every week <laughs> but it wasn't out the lack of trying it was just kenna and o'brien were outstanding i hope i repaid you for the cup final song i wrote for you <laughs> to the longford fans i admire a handful of lads the lads who follow the team everywhere they go we had bad nights and some great ones too it's a great club thank you to everyone at shamrock rovers thank you for those friday nights and coming to my house uh, you could see the floodlights pulling on the famous green and white and hearing the fans sing you wait in the tunnel and the teasing smell of burgers and chips while you wait for the whistle to blow <laughs> It's what you dream of. I'm just a fan. I got lucky. To the fans of Bowes, I love playing in Daily Mount. I love to ab- I loved the, I loved the abuse. I loved having Coke bottles hopped off my head. I didn't like you, but I, I have to say I admired your passion too. And I'm missing. Football is the greatest game on earth, and any- anyone who says otherwise is a lying Luther. Uh, I, it gave me chance to win all Ireland's. It gave me the chance to learn from my hero Dennis Irwin every day in training. It gave me the chance to play in the same team as the man who they say is the maddest man of football, Paul Gascoigne. This is true until I met uh, Bucker Bailey. Uh, sorry, it that gave me, it gave me the chance to captain my country at youth level and blast out Iran the Her- I don't know what that's. Iran the Heron. That's the one. Uh, I'm a poppy fan what can I say it gave me the chance to meet the president of Ireland it gave me so many kicks of the balls like relegations injuries missing Christmas and missing friends and family it gave me the chance to win leagues with superstars like Twig uh, Bradley Baker Salmon and O'Sullivan it gave me the chance to have great fans like Stephen Rice and Pat Sullivan classy on on off the pitch it gave me chances to mark Cristiano Ronaldo from corners it gave me the chance to stand helpless in the corner while Del Piero stuck a free kick in the top <laughs> corner it gave me the chance against to play the league's best like Derek Pender Glenn Crow, Jason Byrne John O'Flynn and Christine. It gave me the chance to play under great captains like Ken and Murray. It gave me the rivalry of Keenan and Brandt. This is a fucking long it's thing. A, I couldn't believe you're calling the whole thing out. It goes on for 10 minutes. It's almost it gave, it, no, it's almost <laughs> over. It gave me the chance to miss a penalty in, uh, miss a pen in front of 30,000 people in Lansdowne Road. It gave me the chance to have songs sung about me, some good, some bad. It gave me the chance for, to play for all of Dublin's big clubs. Anyone who watches football will know I'm an average player but with hard work and commitment is the reason I got all these chances. If, any, if I can do it, anyone can. Never grow up thanks to football. That's a statement, and I just thought it was a bit of magic. Uh, that uh, is pretty great. And on a side note, uh, you know I sent you the Halloween 11. Oh, yes. Yeah, Michael Owen retweeted it and was like, what about my ghoul, Owen? <laughs> That's the only funny thing Michael Owen has ever said. <laughs> Fair play to him. Yes. Yeah, uh, no, pa- Pathlin, though, is a, a nut job. He's uh, an I can tell. madman, <laughs> but yeah, he's had a lot, lot, lot of good stories. How old is he? What? How old is he? 35 now, and he's so. from Longford yeah no no he's he's dub he's from Tala okay so okay, he's, he's so started at Rovers and he just went around but uh, yeah he played he's in the Rovers team that did well in Europe <laughs> alright guys anything else before we finish what's the score of the United match there we've uh, gone long here lost. people are going to be angry at us uh, don't say that my uh, okay. goo alone my goo 2-0 3 minutes to go and Dundalk are still behind Okay, everybody. Thank you very much for listening to the ITK Soccer Show. Go to Facebook.com forward slash ITK. Go to Twitter at the ITK. Go to Daniel Carroll, ITK Soccer Show on YouTube. You're here to tell your case in the LA. Please close your eyes. <laughs>